Hey, what's going on, everybody? Um, Want to start a vlog, a series of what it is that I do. Um, I did a, a little bit of research and I was not really able to find anything in depth on what it is that I currently do. So I decided it might be a good idea to start a vlog on my current position. And currently what I do, I'm a terminal operator. And I want to make a series of videos uh, describing what it is that I do on a daily basis uh, when I am at work, and as well as the benefits, why I enjoy it. Um, if you watch this video and you have any questions about something of the, the uh, along the lines of being a terminal operator, then just drop a comment below. I definitely will respond. But upon researching uh, online, there's not a lot of videos or information on what a terminal operator is. Although, if you search the position, there are numerous positions available. Um, I know growing up in North Carolina, I had no idea what, what a terminal operator was. And uh, basically, it's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, you're a terminal operator. So you operate the terminal the same as if you was a terminal manager, you would, you're the manager over the terminal or if you're a locomotive operator or a forklift operator, whatever it might be. And the terminal that I work at uh, in Jacksonville, Florida, uh, we do storage. So some terminals um, blend, refine, they have pipelines, um, transmits, but primarily our terminal, we store product for a customer. And we get the product via barge, vessel, rail, or truck. And like I said, I searched the position but there's not a detailed overview of what it is uh, a day, day in and day out, daily routine of being a terminal operator. So that's why I want to start this vlog of what it is that I do and uh, the reasons why I enjoy doing it. And um, I would say the first and foremost, number one reason I enjoy being a terminal operator is the schedule. I love the schedule. Uh, I am not a Monday through Friday, nine to five type of person. I have never wanted to work a schedule like that. Um, the current schedule that we work is a modified DuPont schedule. So a traditional DuPont schedule would be you work four days, you work three days, you work three days, and you work four days and then you get seven days off um, on that fourth week. And if you add it up, that's 14 days for the month. And I'm not sure of the exact number of off days, but I will imagine it will add up to the uh, seven days off. So, so, so for the month, you would get a total of 14 days off and you work uh, 14 days. Some terminals work two weeks on, two weeks off. I would love to do that. So for example, you will work two weeks of days, then you'll be off for two weeks, then you'll come back, work two weeks of nights, then you'll be off for two weeks. I would really love to go to that schedule, but we work what you call a modified DuPont schedule. So currently, for example, this week, uh, Monday, Tuesday was my off day. And then I worked Wednesday, Thursday nights. And then technically I was off Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's my short week. And then coming up on uh, 
next Monday, which will be tomorrow, I will work Monday, Tuesday, days, and I'll be off Wednesday, Thursday, and I'll work Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights. So that's a two week period for a paycheck and I work seven days. So in that week and then I work, uh, I was off seven days. So in a two week period, I'd be off seven days. I work seven days for the month total. I work 14 days. I love the schedule. Some people, oh, that sucks. Well, I never wanted to work on Monday through Friday, nine to five. If I wanted that, then that's what I would pursue. But for my lifestyle, my personality, for example, uh, I was supposed to be off Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but I had the opportunity to work overtime Saturday night. So I'm just getting off Sunday morning. And what am I about to do? I'm about to head out and go fishing. So the personality, the, the, the lifestyle of my schedule works for me and my family and what we do. Um, the second most reason that I feel, of course, is the pay. Very highly paid. Um, working in this industry as a terminal operator, the money is there. I really don't even have to speak on it. I mean, if you do your research, it's a hundred thousand dollar a year job. So maybe not starting out, but for me it was because I worked a lot of overtime because the overtime was there. So pay uh, to some people may not be as important to others it may, but the pay is very good. Um, you're able to uh, make a living and also have a lifestyle outside of work. But of course, working in this industry, you can definitely make over $100,000 a year easily without trying. And if you try to work as much overtime, you might work, you might make another 10,000 or 20,000. <clears> and to some people, it might not even matter. It might, so I mean, it's, it's whatever it is. Like I said, I found out Wednesday night that uh, someone was taken off Saturday, I signed up for it, boom. So I had the opportunity to make the extra money. Uh, the third most reason why uh, I enjoy being a terminal operator is what I do. Um, I work at the port, so I'm an outdoors person. I'm right on the water, the St. John's River. Um, I see numerous boaters every day. I see numerous fish every day. Um, Coyotes, possums, raccoons, uh, snakes, birds, eagles, hawks, owls, uh, everything. Because I'm outdoors, We're constantly outdoors. We are. We have operations, but mainly the job is an outdoors position. Um, terminals are different, but for example, our terminal, there are like three or four positions kind of combined. So some terminals, they, they might hire for a rail car loader, unloader. But at our terminal, a terminal operator, you unload rail cars. That's a part of your, your uh, duties. Uh, for example, some terminals uh, in Texas or Louisiana or Savannah or Charleston, they may hire for a PIC or a loadmaster. But at our terminal, terminal operator, uh, if, if it's your turn to go to the dock on dot watch, that's what you're doing for the day. And then as a terminal operator, we line up transfers, uh, check the overall uh, operation of the terminal, gauge tanks, um, take samples when needed. So there's a lot of variety in my position. So for example, I was off Last Monday, Tuesday, I worked Wednesday, Thursday nights. Uh, Wednesday night, I unloaded rail cars. So it was my night to unload rail cars. So I unloaded the rail cars that we had uh, for
for tonight at the NAW. And um, we have uh, inventory. So we have inventory, which consists of gauging tanks, whatever tanks need to be gauged. And in, in another video, I might get in depth uh, with what gauging is if someone asks or wanna know. Um, and then we bring the gauges back and then it's all entered and uh, sent to the appropriate people. And then uh, basically, it's kind of when you when you come in for the start of your shift, you know the major task that needs to be completed. So for example, whether it be we have a vessel coming, we have a tug loading, or we have rail cars to offload, or if it's on day shift, we have contractors coming in uh, doing a specific job. So you kind of know uh, the major core items of your shift. But for example, I'm gonna talk about something called AVOs. So that's audio, visual, and olfactory, your, your smell. So no matter what time of the day it is, day, night, whatever you're doing, you always can do AVOs. So even if you have downtime and you just wanna get up, get out and about, say, hey, I'm gonna to go to Annex 1 or hey, I'm gonna to go to Annex 2 and I'm gonna do AVOs. So AVOs, uh, you're looking, you're listening, you're smelling, you're sniffing. So what are you looking for? You're looking for leaks. You're looking for uh, something that doesn't sound right. Uh, you have to have a twit to be inside the terminal it's a transportation worker identification card. It's like government clearance. So you have to be aware of your surroundings, like no one is on the uh, company's property or um, what are you listening for? Of course, hissing. You're listening for pumps that don't sound right. So for example, if you're familiar with how pump sounds like a hum, but if you're walking and you hear, imagine like a bag of rocks in the dryer, it doesn't sound right. So we take the appropriate steps to uh, either address it, correct it, or report it. And you smell them. So for example, if I walk out in a tank farm, there's a strong aroma smell of of uh, gasoline or, or diesel, it smells unusually strong and I know something is wrong. And, and if you look on the thumbnail, you can see I have a LEL monitor. So when I'm walking around, that monitor will alert me if it detects uh, levels that's unsafe or dangerous. So like I said, man, I could talk for hours, but uh, like I said, I just got off work. I wanted to start this video on why um, I enjoy being a terminal operator. And I know that's not that much information out there on YouTube about what a terminal operator do. So if someone searches it, I'm gonna uh, start this uh, series on how uh, the daily duties of being a terminal operator are uh, played out. So yeah, if you have any questions, drop a comment. Also, uh, if you're not a subscriber to my channel, please check out some of my content. Uh, um, I think you will enjoy it. And until next time, catch not fish.